comedy, I really truly believe this, and this is why I got into comedy in the first place, it causes change. And if you tell the truth and you do it in a funny way, you can cause great social change. And Jack, hey, you were the first uh, African-American woman to ever win uh, an Emmy for... And still, isn't that, so, that's Is it now? still? So for supporting actress, wait, I think that was 1989, am 19, I right? Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and I'm a firm believer that though, you know, those shows around that time from 227 and Amen, the Cosby Show for me, they allowed America to see black people in a different way, which then had something to do, I believe, with having a black president. And now you're, you're playing a character on a show that's about a black president. It's art imitating life, president's imitating art. sister-in-law, oh, yeah. I love it. Um, and that was no character, by the way. He wrote that in. Really? I came to you the audition right? grandmother, the part that Marla Gibbs is doing. Yeah. I was gonna do that part. And then he said, oh, you ain't nobody's grandmother. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, I'm not. And yeah. Marla said, okay, I'll take it. I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, but do you, did you realize at the time when you're doing this stuff, like how important that is? I, I didn't realize that another African-American woman hasn't won. I do now, that. but not then. Yeah. Because I figured another world, you know, will come along, but you don't do that. I didn't do it for that purpose, you know. But um, it's, it's great, you know, but I, I would like another one to happen. So that's what I'm about, mentoring. Yeah. That's why all the, the daily tweets in the morning, affirmation, so that you could feel better and get it done, go to work and sink your teeth into it, don't be afraid, because sometimes women, we pull back. Yeah. But we've been taught that way because, you know, we don't want to be noticed. It's about modesty and all that, but, you know, my Angela, modesty must fall away like a cloak. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, so no. Yeah. So that's, that's what it's about. You well, know? one thing that I think is really cool about Big Bang is you guys have made nerd culture and being smart actually feels cool mm -hmm. suddenly. Is that something that you're very aware of? That like you guys are talking about science all the time. You have great scientists on the show. You had uh, uh, Stephen Hawking. I mean, you've had some amazing people on there. D do you feel that like it's actually doing something good beyond just making people laugh? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's it's really special. Just you know, on <laughs> on tape nights, um, our fantastic. Uh, Warm up comedian ask the audience what this show means to them, and we get to hear how the a lot of, uh, of the audience feels that this is the first time that we've seen characters like this portrayed on TV and people who like the things that this that a lot of this country likes that we has not a light has not been shined on that before, and I think they do such a fantastic job of that. Yeah. Do you feel like it's like all these nerds coming out of the closet? I have to legally <laughs> I, in this show I have to make one gay reference somehow, but I feel like the nerds are getting Is like. That's true legally in this. Le they're on this paperwork here. I, I have see to that. make one it somewhere. Just, it just says one gay reference. One that's gay it. reference. That's mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. That. It, it's like all these nerds are finally getting somewhat, they're getting validated by you guys. It's really cool, I think. It's, it's very cool. I mean, I was a nerd growing up. I mean, a different kind of nerd. You say. were like, was, a, like a theater nerd? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah, like a theater, a comedy nerd, obviously doing impressions yeah. for show and tell. But, um, and I think it's really cool. I think that we've all been underdogs at some point in our life and it's, and it's really cool to see a group of underdogs who are doing their thing and they're smart and they're successful and it's really nice. And I also like the fact that it's, you know, both myself and mine play scientists on the show and it's two female characters both playing scientists. Whereas I think, you know, a lot of times you would say like, okay, well that'll be the scientist character and then that's it. And it's a group of smart people who are all doing something in that field, which I think is really, it's really yeah. neat. And Mayim, isn't she a neuroscientist in real yes. life or yes. something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, She is? For, yeah. Real? For real? For real. She's heavy, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't Dr. know that. Dr. Mayim Biag. Wow. Do you refer to her as doctor behind the... I do. Behind the scenes? I do. It took me a while. First, I was just calling her Blossom, and then she let me call her doctor. Yeah. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, well, because I mentioned the coming out of the closet thing, Jack, hey, I know that the gays love you. What What is it about you that you think the gays just adore? Gay man gave me my name. Is Andre it? DeShields, Jack, hey, that's yeah. right. Yes, and I've dressed and, and, and been with them and uh, I've been in love with gay men, uh, you know, and people always say, what does that mean? I said, love has nothing to do with sexuality or choices. It just has to do with love, you know, so it's just a, a connection, you know what I mean? It's not just, because you're gay. I don't like all gay men, but I haven't found one I don't like. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, is it, but don't you think there's something, because you're so infectious and there's something so warm about you, that gay people, for some reason, are always attracted to that? Sort of like a moth to a flame. They always love people that are sort and of bigger I, than life. And we all love the same movies. 
And Sunset Boulevard, my fa one of my favorites. I mean, yeah. you know, well, it's, you know, it's very just, theatric. That's yes, right. you know, I, but I think it just happened. I mean, it's like Bette Midler, who I loved growing up. Uh, you know, it's just something you have or you don't. You know, it's not something you are. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? I you do. Know? And Melissa, speaking of the gay thing, I have to reveal a little something that you and my grandma were literally the only two people that when I came out, they said, oh, I thought maybe. Wait, I didn't know your grandma you, also. My grandma said that she was in the, thir the theater in the 30s, um, so she thought, really? which really wasn't even true, it's a whole, that's a whole other <laughs> side, side family story. But can you explain to the good people why you uh, thought maybe that I was? I believe right. it involves a drink that I might have ordered at a oh, restaurant that you were oh. working at. Oh, I forgot, yes. I, didn't I say to you, because you ordered a mojito? Yeah. A mojito, Jackie. Can you, does a mojito strike you as a gay drink? No. And yet I ordered. You had to be there. That's one of those. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think I was joking. From okay. now on, anybody knows mojitos I, gay. I got it. I got mojito it. is. You gay. want a mojito? Oh. Yeah. You were joking? Yeah. I mean. I thought you were on to me. You, I, I thought the mojito. I didn't drink a mojito for ten years <laughs> after that. Bonobos.com is the official outfitter of the Rubin Report. Enter code TRR20 for twenty percent off your first purchase.